This is John Paul Rice, some people call me. <music> Having a busy weekend, can't see the Joker yet. It's been really fun hearing how amazing it is. I guess I'll eventually see it and I'll probably see it more than once, but for now I want to talk about the box office because I don't have to see it to tell you I'm really happy that it's doing good and hands down, every channel I watch, everyone I've talked to said it's amazing, so at some point I'll get there, but right now I can't even leave my house. This is like my prison, but I got the internet, so let's keep checking things out. So if you guys have been watching this channel, you know I'm not a big box office guy, but it's pretty simple, and I don't have, like, a box office guy on the channel. Maybe one day, if I get someone good enough who could do it and they're willing. Anyway, let's get into it. Box Office Mojo, Joker Eyes, October opening weekend record. So from what I hear, it's doing pretty good. Friday AM update. So now it's Saturday morning. Okay, it's Saturday morning in the States right now. It's 10 p.m. around Tokyo. So, all right. I guess the Saturday numbers aren't quite in yet. So this video will be good for like 24 hours, basically. Alright, here we go. Friday AM update, Warner Brothers' release of Joker is off to a stellar start, bringing in an October record for Thursday night previews totaling 13.3 million. The performance tops a previous record of 10 million brought in by Venom, so it's beating Venom already. Last year before going on to open with the current October opening weekend record of 80. 2 million. The film will open in an October record. 4,374 theaters beginning today and is well on its way to breaking even more records. And that's the thing. What you can't forget is Joker is this classic character who's been around for, I don't know, 70 years, something like that, since about the 1930s, 40s, yeah, 1940s. And, you know, when Lord of the Rings came out, I saw, like, old folk in the theater. Like, I mean, 70s, maybe 80s, like, glasses and, like, you know, sweaters, like a grandmother. And I think the Joker is going to pull out a lot of generations from the past who have loved this character their whole life. Everyone wants to see it. People want to see what's going on in modern movies. And when they see a classic, legendary character like that, they're going to want to see it. And also, the negative hype from the social justice media helped it. It made it so people wanted to see it. They want to know what's going on. And the people who were on the fence, like, really probably came to the side of seeing it. And the people who wanted to see it in the first place, like me, want to see it even more. And, to top it off, the people like me and maybe you watching who are in this fight against social justice warriors and political correctness might want to see it twice or even three times to help its numbers. Just a little theory of mine. Debuting in over 4,300 locations, Joker is already the widest October opening of all time, topping the 4,250 theaters Venom opened in last year before setting the October opening weekend record with an 80.2 million debut. On top of opening in more theaters than Venom, it will also be getting a one-hour head start in terms of Thursday previews, which begin at 4 p.m. A look at IMDb page views is also trending more and more positively, growing as the week goes on with pacing similarly not only to Venom but also Logan 88.4 million opening and pacing ahead of both Scepter 70.4 million and Halloween 76.2 million. The studio is anticipating an opening anywhere from 70 to 80 million while we see it more like 75 to 85 plus million based on these metrics and perhaps topping 90 million and it was called out at 90 million by one of those articles I'm not gonna get into it I'm not gonna look up the article but it's been predicted by one of the major sources that it will be 92 million dollars in opening and that makes me really happy because I think it's hard to say I mean I can't say a top 10 top 5 definitively but I've liked Batman probably even about as long as Star Wars. Yeah, pretty even. I mean, I guess I found them about the same time. So, it really makes me happy to see this classic Batman character doing so well. I also like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I never talk about it because they're not really big in the news. And I'm very influenced in my own artwork and stuff, which I have no time to do anymore, by Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not necessarily Star Wars. Just saying it's like really, really classic for me as far as like my history with fiction and stuff like that so I just want to see this thing smash it over and over and over and 
it really feels better because this has been called the nostalgianist toxic movie. It's not. I can't say that for 100% because I haven't seen it, but I'm going to trust pretty much everyone who has seen it because the people who've seen it that reviewed it are on the same page as me. And one quick note about movie reviews, channels like mine that do like pop culture, entertainment, kind of drama type stuff reviews don't do so good anyway. So I'm not going to review the movie. You know, I'm not going to sit there and say it was like this, it was like that. I'll touch upon it when I see it, my thoughts, but I'm going to have to spin it in a different direction than just like a plain movie review. Because I don't really do movie reviews in this channel. Anyway, let's do a shout out. Shout out goes to Comics Con Culture. Thank you very much. They've been here for quite a while now. A couple of months, more than a couple of months, maybe four, maybe five. Not exactly sure. There's your shout out. And click that subscribe button, press it, smash it, whatever you got to do. I said end awkwardly, but that's okay because it's the end of the video. See you next time. If you are not subscribed to this channel, The Entertainment Hacker, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button now.